I visited a soup kitchen in Jerusalem where my son and daughter-in-law were volunteers. I was so impressed with how they fed over 500 poor people every day with dignity. I came home to America determined to raise money to help them. The idea hit me. Why not combine stories from Holocaust survivors with their family recipes? This is a collection of 250 miracles. Come into my home as we make the recipes and read the story to all who eat. Let me share the miracles with you. Hi, this is Joanne Karras with Miracles and Meals, and I am so excited about our show here today. I have some people to introduce to you. As you can tell, we're not in our kitchen with just my adorable husband, That's Har me. <laughs> Harvey. But I am here at the Anderson Middle School in Stewart, Florida, where we have been invited to come and cook with them. We have with us Penny, who is the teacher in the Culinary Arts Academy. We have Madison, who's going to be our assistant here today. And we're going to be doing things a little bit different. I know you're going to enjoy this show. We're going to be making a recipe, telling the story in the first segment, and then I'll tell you a little bit about our program later. So let's get started here. Okay, and Penny, would we thank you for having us here today. And um, do you have Tell us a little bit about this program that we're involved in. Well, this with is a uh, brand new culinary program this year, starting with sixth grade, going on to seventh, and then hopefully the eighth. With, uh, eighth graders would like to go on to high school. Uh, it's travel and tourism with culinary, and we are so excited to be a part of your project and sharing the cooking experience with our seventh graders today. Thank you so much Thank for you. coming. Madison, you're one of the students, right? Okay, great. Glad to have you both. Thank you. We're really excited. Yeah. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a parv cheesecake. Now parv means not meat and not dairy. So what I have is two containers. Instead of a cream cheese, I have a, um, it's called a vegan or a, a veggie kind of an alternative to cream cheese. But Harvey, why don't you tell us who our story is going to yeah. be about well, here first today? First of all, that vegan stuff, not for me. I just want right. you to okay. know. Right, okay. So, big, so you know what? You can, so you can substitute and have cream cheese, yeah, put which the cream I cheese did. In, I'll eat it. But okay, well, but anyway. we needed this to be parv today. Parv means you can have it with meat, you can have it with dairy. If you're going to have a cake, cheesecake for dessert and you just had meat, you don't want to have dairy. Exactly. So. Okay, this story is, comes to us from Naomi Rosenfeld who's from uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and she actually told us this story herself. And I just want to read you a little bit of it because this okay. is a very uh, interesting story. And wait a minute, I just want to ask, yeah. Madison, how old are you? Twelve. Yeah. So, well. so when Harvey reads it, let's say if we could focus on Madison because think about here is just a little 12-year-old and what would happen to her. Right. She said, I was 12 years old. That day I was called to the butcher to pick up some salami. We hadn't had any meat for a long time. So my family was happy to have the salami. Suddenly, I heard screaming and banging outside the butcher shop. The butcher pushed me out the back door, salami in hand, and said, don't look back. I heard the shattering of glass and the breaking of windows. I went out into the back alley and ran home. I saw the word Jews written on the building. On the way home, I passed the synagogue. The building was on fire and the Torah scrolls and prayer books had been taken out of the synagogue and thrown on the ground where people were deliberately walking over them. When I got home, I screamed to my family that something terrible was happening. Then I blacked out. That's what she remembers. The good news is that she and yes. her family were able to escape. They got out on a train at 11 o'clock at night with only the clothes on their backs and they escaped to Italy. And uh, when we, when we, she said, when we stopped at the last station of the train, a German soldier yelled, Juden, come out here, Jews, come out here. But we didn't come and we ran and we got away. So they were able to escape. And that's it. So they were able to escape. So that's why we're, we're honoring you today so that you can help and um, not only at 12 years old that you could make this recipe but that hopefully that you will share this story around your table okay so All the right, first so thing we're going to do is we're going to put our two containers of you of course could put the cream cheese but we've got this here and I'll let you if you could if you wouldn't mind could you please pour in the one cup of sugar all right and penny how about i've always asked you could you get this ready for us um, we need one teaspoon of vanilla now all eggs have to be checked 
to make sure that they're kosher, and I always do that. I pour it in one bowl separately. Even if I have two eggs, check to make sure there aren't any spots. I'm just gonna stir this up, and if you could add penny. Thank you very much. This looks like a pretty simple recipe. Yes, it is. And look, you add this, and all we're gonna do, you wanna help me stir it up? Okay, we're gonna stir it up. We're gonna pour it in our, and what she called for was just a graham cracker, ready-made crust. So how easy could this be? You could even make this at home, couldn't you? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. I and, could make it. That's how easy And we have the oven on at 350, and it says it's gonna take about 30 minutes to um, get the cake, get this pie, all this cheesecake pie cake, all ready for us. Oh, perfect! You did an excellent job. And we're gonna pour it in here. It's gonna go into the oven. I'll give it one more twirl around. How's that? You did an excellent job. And I'm gonna have you help me get it in here, okay? All righty. Can you help me just hold that bottom for me? All right. We'll pour this in. It's gonna go right into the oven. And then the wonderful thing is that you could put any kind of topping. Now what topping did she actually say that she preferred for this, she Harvey? She likes cherry pie she likes filling, cherry pie filling. Okay, and what kind of filling would you like if you were gonna make yours at home, Madison, do you think you would have? Would you have apple, cherry, blueberry, strawberry? Uh, either apple or blueberry. Okay, so that's the nice thing about this. So Penny, if I could give this to you, it's gonna take 30 minutes, but you know, I always check, you know, I would put it down for 25 minutes, make sure that, you know, it, you want it to get just a nice little brown, and then if you could bring me back here, this the next one, yep. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to- This is one that's done. This is, it's already been cooled, it's out, and if you could just put cherries around the edge, I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna finish up here, we're gonna take a break, and when we come back, we are going to be showing you a video of Bronia First story. And then we'll take a break from there and we'll come back and make her recipe. So join us for a very special day here with Petty Wolf, Madison, my husband and I, at the Anderson Middle School right here in Stewart, Florida. What are you making for us, Bubby? I'm making my rogalach rachala. Oh, that's my favorite. Me too. You know, this was my mother's recipe, and she showed it to me. So now I want to show you how to do it, so you can make rogalach for your family someday. That's so great, Bubby. But is it hard to do? Nothing is hard if you love what you do. Here's the ingredients. Come do it with me, girls. Bubby, did you get the recipe from this cookbook? No, sweet Danish. I put the recipe in the cookbook. Your regular recipe is in a cookbook? Yes, it is. How did it get in there, Bubby? Well, they asked me to give a recipe for the Holocaust Survivor Cookbook. Bubby, Mommy told us you were a Holocaust survivor, but we never got to hear your story. Will you tell it to us? Hmm. I never told you because I didn't think you were ready. But now I guess you might be. Yes, Bubby, we want to know what happened to you. Yes, please tell us. I was born in Stanislav, Poland. When I was nine years old, I was separated from my parents and sent to a concentration camp. After the camp was liberated, I was sent to an orphanage. Every day, I hoped and waited for my parents to come for me. I hope my 
my mama comes for me today. She probably will. Just think positive. This never seems to be clean enough. I'm so tired. Me too. I just want to go home already. Oh, come on, you guys. Cleaning's not that bad. It's actually pretty fun. Yeah, it's so much fun. Oh, my. I wonder who that could be. Um, my name is Mr. Gretberg. Run along, girls. I think we have your daughter here, Mr. Gretberg. your father. Oh no, that that's not my papa. I'm so sorry. I only wish I were him. Or that you were my Rivka. Me too. Stay strong. I will pray for you to be reunited with him. Wait, please. Yes? I know you're not my papa, but you're my only hope to return home to Stanislav. I'm sorry, I cannot help you. Yes, you can. But how? Claim me as your daughter and take me home. They'll never know. But I could be arrested for doing such a thing. Please, sir. I won't tell anyone. I beg of you. to make it to my meeting. Excuse me, what time is it? Four o'clock, I think. Rosie, Mommy told us not to talk to strangers. Sorry, do we have some bread we can give her or something? Well, yeah, but I want it. I'm hungry. I'll just give her mine. Thank you. Thank you so much. May Hashem bless you for all you've done for me. May Hashem watch over you and take you home to your family. All aboard! market here in Stanislav was destroyed. It no longer exists. Oh no! I had to find my home. Maybe I could help you. <laughs> what, what's your name? It's Branya. Branya first. First. That name sounds familiar. I, I think you have an aunt that survived the war. Can you take me to her? I'll tell you what. Come to my house tonight, and tomorrow I'll bring you to your aunt. Oh, thank you so much. Come.
Brian is here, wake up. I have a surprise for you. Did you bring my aunt here? It's not your aunt. Mama! Mama! My sweetheart. Thank you, Hashem, for letting me find my little one. Mama. And my brother was alive, too. Wow, Bobby. And Mr. Grodberg, the man who took me out of the orphanage, he found his Rifkala, too. That story makes me happy and sad at the same time. That's okay, Sarala. My story has a happy ending, and nothing makes me happier than the two of you. Nothing makes me happier than eating your regla. Oh, Rahala. <laughs> Is everybody having a good time? Yes! Well, you know, we are just thrilled that you were able to be able to see the story from Bronia first by video today instead of us telling the story because it was, it was made by children just about your age. And now if you could tell us, Harvey, a, a little bit about yeah. Bronia and the recipe we're going to make today. Yeah, this, this video was made by a group of girls at a camp in yeah. Troy, New York, last summer. And uh, they actually made three videos of three of our stories and put it into one DVD, and they're selling it uh, to raise money for their camp. So we'll show you later, if you're interested, in right. how you can buy that, that DVD for these girls. And it was the Jewish Girls Retreat, Jewish camp, girls retreat camp in, in Albany. Training. And yep. I was there. My husband actually wrote the script, and we worked on it together um, with the production crew there. But now okay. we've got to make the recipe to go with the all right. story. So now, what are we making yeah, it's today? It's called Rugelach, and it's one of my favorite things of all time. When, when Joanne speaks, we often give the people recipes to make at the event. And uh, my job is to test the rugelach to make sure it's okay. good enough. Okay, all right. So <laughs> now, if I can have my assistant, Madison, could you please put one, um, one stick in the bowl, please? Okay, you can just kind of lift the lid. That's perfect. Great. All right, and then I'm going to give this one, our great assistant here, Penny, <laughs> and one more in, please. And then we're going to have one egg and then one egg yolk that's going to go in here thank you and what i always do is i check the egg and i'm going to check it in my bowl whoops there we go to make sure that there is a, that it's clear and when i'm making sure that there aren't any spots red spots in that would actually be the blood okay thank you and now it calls for one egg and then also one egg uh, one egg yolk. So um, anyway, oh there we go. Here's my. I knew I had that. And I have this great little contraption for you. I want to show you all this. I'm going to actually crack the egg. I only need the yolk. So I am going to open this up here. Okay. Then I am going to pour out the yolk. The, I'm going to pour out the water, and I'm Ooh, only going to have yeah the. The there you go. <laughs> the white stuff. Okay, is it coming? Is it coming? Come oh, okay. On, on. And now we just need the egg yolk here. Great. We'll put that here. And if we could have Madison, can you just stir this up for us, please? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the margarine, the eggs, and the egg yolks. We're going to mix this up here in our bowl. I have my yeast already. You have to get your yeast started. So my yeast is already, um, I've added sugar one package of yeast and warm water and that's all set oh thank you that's great madison we're going to pour this in here we're going to mix this up together here and i'm going to get this all soft and then i'm going to just after i get it all ready now of course you could use a mixer but um you this is going to be fine also you should make sure that your um Margarine is a little bit because this is a part recipe. I did not use butter. And now I'm going to be adding to that my, my yeast mixture. And you, did you see how it was all bubbly and frothy? That's exactly how I want this. Now I'm going to be adding three cups of my flour to make this. I'm going to get this in here. I would be finishing up with three cups of flour until this forms now this wonderful, wonderful dough. Okay, Madison, if you could 
bring that over to us. This is what our dough should actually look like here. I'll put some flour here. All right. And I've got my rolling pin. And now the dough, how do I know the dough is ready? So I would have really mixed that up together. But because of time here, you can tell it doesn't stick to my hand. And what happens is if it would stick to my hand, you keep putting your hand in the flour until it doesn't stick. I'm going to make it into a ball. I'm going to roll it out just like this. And if you could bring me the next one, I'm going to show you. Um, I already have it ready. Okay, because I want to get to the students. Our students here today are going to help us. It's a so, miracle how fast here, she is Yes, doing yes, yes, yes. And I just need the pie cutter. All right, so now this is where our students are. They've been waiting. They've got their aprons on. They've got their gloves on. They already have what, what I've already finished is the dough finished. I've made all my triangles. And they are ready to now fill with me. And Madison, if you can have yours, bring yours over right here. What I need to do is have my raisins, some sugar, some cinnamon, okay, and my raisins. And all I did was just, you know, it's easy, just mix them up in a bag. Each one of our students has their own triangle, and they are actually, they have parchment paper. I'm going to pull this out here so you can be watching me. Can everybody see? Can you see up here? Great, students. All right, so now when I, they all, they're going to be just like I am. They're going to be starting with the fat part of the triangle. They're going to be taking their, so you might want to turn yours around, and they're going to be pouring the cinnamon sugar and the raisins on. If it falls off, it doesn't make any difference of their onto their parchment paper. They're going to start from the very wide end and they're going to be rolling up, rolling up. How are you doing out there? Good? Good. And by the way, for and those of you watching at home, a lot of the recipe calls for walnuts, but we didn't do it today because of the school policies. policies Absolutely. We didn't want to worry about anybody being allergic. Now, the very point should be tucked in and under, and that's how these are going to be baked. They're going to be baked for, I would say about, it says I think 30 minutes, but I think we, I, what I did yesterday, it took about 25 minutes at 350 in my oven. So again, always when you're cooking, don't have it on the exact time, maybe five minutes earlier so that you could be able to, it wouldn't be too golden. So now what we have with us, if you could also, we need our pie. We had a wonderful day here at the Anderson School. Thank you, Penny. Thank you, thank Madison, you. for helping you. And of course, my wonderful husband, Harvey. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And thanks for our crew. Darren, thank you for having mm. us here today, coming out and taping us on location. And to our wonderful students, did you learn something here today? Yes! <laughs> Great. Now, this is your job. Please make the recipe at home. Tell the story around your table. And that's what this project has always been about. With blessings from Joanne and all of our friends here from Stewart, Florida. Until next time, bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye.